Hey, Marcus Conti. Windy here in New York. It's uh, today's October 30th, 2017. Marcus Conti, former sanitation enforcement agent for the city of New York. If, uh, if you're enjoying this series and uh, you like some of the insights and some of the things that are coming out of it, uh, <clears throat> greatly appreciate it if you could make a contribution down below. You could uh, PayPal me. And uh, definitely subscribe, definitely like the videos, definitely comment. It's very helpful. So I want to call this, um, you know, segment um, living in the third dimension, right? You know, this morning I woke up and I, I, I was reading the news and I saw uh, Paul Manafort was indicted on, you know, 12 or so fake charges by... Mueller and Comey and McCabe and these guys, right? They basically, when they're going after Manafort, a guy who worked on the president's campaign, tying him to Russia deal, Russia dealings, when all along the Clinton Foundation was acutely involved in the the Uranium One deal, right? So. You got this this kind of altered reality going on where Manafort, the guy is, he was may, maybe the cab driver, you know, ten years ago in the incident. But you have Comey and and um, and certainly the Clintons and the Clinton Foundation running the running the scam to sell uranium at a discount price to the Russians. Right? So also um, right here in New York, Board of Elections went on record as saying that they broke state and federal law. And uh, they knowingly uh, purged 2,000 registered voters off the rolls, 117,000 right here in New York City, right here in Brooklyn. And, um, you know, I kept reading the article. I was reading down the line. I was like, oh, wow, someone's head's going to roll for this. <laughs> Nothing. No consequence whatsoever. They're going to they, they, they're gonna, uh, apologize. 200,000 people got kicked off the voter rolls. They broke state and federal law. No problem. No, no, no slip. So we're living in, a, in an altered reality where it's not so much, it's not rule of law anymore. It's, it's who you know, right? It's all, it's, all, uh, it's all influence peddling, right? And so what else did I want to say today? Oh, yeah, I wanted to define, I wanted to, um, because, again, this is, uh, at some point, I probably will pivot this series to the bigger picture. But for now, you know, I want to stay. I want to stay local, and uh, I want to. I want to. I want to read you the uh, definition of enforcement, right? Because I, I made, you know, I made the the the. Um, I made a a uh, I don't know what you call, it, but I painted a picture of the enforcement division becoming uh, involved in. Community affairs in some way, and uh, that's that's really not a far reach. Because let me read it. Let me read it. What, what does enforcement mean? Enforcement, the act of compelling observance of or compliance with a law, rule, or obligation. Now, it doesn't say anywhere in there that you got to beat people over the head with tickets. It doesn't say you have to imprison people. It doesn't say you have to turn people into ATM machines by writing piles and piles of tickets for things that may may or may not have happened. It says the act of compelling observance, compelling observance. So what that means to me is, is um, you know, you have smart policing where community policing, they, rather than go and arrest a bunch of people or run them over with tickets, they go into the community and... Basically, you, 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 the 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 element of compelling is someone in uniform, police presence. That's a that's a way of compelling. So, what I'm saying is that if the argument becomes that enforcement is not community affairs at all, enforcement is to is writing tickets. That's how it's become defined, right? Enforcement's only function is to write tickets, and the the act of writing tickets is the act of um, educating the community. Right? That's what they that's what they said. That 
writing tickets, we're educating the community by writing tickets. And I, again, I fundamentally disagree with this uh, view that enforcement is, in fact, and can be, in fact, a way of educating the community without running them over with tickets. So that, that's all. This is just a little thinking outside of the box. It's not that, it's not that uh, difficult to, you know, it's not that difficult a concept to grasp, you know, a broom and a break, you know, rather than here's your ticket and smack it on the door. Right? So, and, you know, just a little, little bit of the update. You've seen this, um, again, this is no retreat, no surrender. Uh, Department of Sanitation. No retreat, no surrender on my end. Now, you know, I, I know that, um, you know, it might be a stretch. You might be thinking it's a stretch to bring you guys up on RICO charges, but it but it really isn't. There's already a preponderance of, an ev of the evidence. There's also, there's already a group of academics that have taken an interest in in seeing it through. So we'll get, we'll get more on that. And, um, you know, they're, they're working pretty diligently. And all along, you know, the the, the longer, again, this is a, this is a, the third dimension. We're living in the third dimension where a regular citizen like myself takes a job for a civil service test, and he 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 gets run over in ways that he's not sure what the reason is. Is it discrimination? Is it retaliation? Is it did you accidentally expose corruption? Is it all of the above? Right, and 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 a guy reaches out to his to the agencies and the the, um, the people that are in place, like e EEO, Equal Employment Opportunity, whatever whatever it stands for. It doesn't stand for anything in my book. Um, you know, and instead of getting justice, instead of getting the problem addressed, he's he's run over with fake allegations and. He's run off the premise, fired, terminated from employment, all right? And he then tries to present his case and, and because of the corruption power of an agency like DSMY and the, the who you know factor rather than rule of law, he loses there and continues and continues on. And then now we're in the, in the, in the third dimension where I'm talking to you directly. I'm talking to, I'm talking to the general public. I'm talking to the certainly the, the, um, the lawyers and the the uh, and the agency heads. I know you're all watching this, you know. So that I have to present my case directly to you, and ultimately, and respectfully, the judges at the um, first department of the appellate division, right? And their and their aides, whoever's watching this, and you know, quite possibly, quite possibly, a jury down the road. That's still not off the table. This is insanity. This is insanity, right? Where, you know, at a local level, you're you're seeing the, the corruption where people's voices don't matter anymore, and you're seeing that the the your vote doesn't count. You know, and 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 if if the agency should decide to assure that your vote doesn't count, you know, example, Bernie Sanders comes to town, they knock two hundred thousand voters off the rolls and twist it in a way where he couldn't possibly win. You know, voter suppression, all all these things that are going on, and then you know, if someone accidentally votes twice, they go to prison, or. You know, they get one line wrong on their taxes and they lose their house. Or, you know, someone walking down the street with a with a joint or a pill in their pocket to calm the pain or whatever it is that they, they're using the drug for. And, and they, they suddenly end up in, in, in uh, jail. And, and, and the, the, the system, or, you know, in the case of enforcement where you have... Instead of DOI, Department of Investigations, investigating the corruption that's presented to them, in my case, that I presented the, the, the corruption to them, instead, they, they make the allegation that the corruption is an agent who takes $5, that someone runs out of their house when, when the agent is about to write a ticket and hands the agent 
five dollars or fifteen dollars or twenty dollars not to write the ticket. That does not happen. That has never happened in my experience. Not even close. You know, this 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 notion of of this kind of pseudo corruption is is fake corruption. The real corruption is the corruption we're talking about, where agencies, you know, write ninety two in in the case of DSNY posting, write ninety two thousand dollars worth of fake tickets to a guy in the Bronx. And when caught, they, oh, it's just an error. They made a mistake. They were shaking a guy down for ninety-two thousand dollars, and it's just a mistake. Nobody, there's no problem here. No problem. No problem. Right. So, so that that is the third dimension. Everything that I'm putting up right now on YouTube will remain on YouTube forever and ever. This is a documented record, documented history. You know, and if something should, you know, happen to me down the road and Suddenly, I have a tax problem, or a, or a, or a, a jaywalking problem, or some other fictitious problem, you know, and and some other. You'll know why, you know. You'll know why. Was it, you know, there used to be that commercial. Is it live or is it Memorex? You know, you're like you can't tell the difference anymore. And um, so that you know, that's pretty much the. Uh, that's pretty much the third dimension and um, you know I'll keep going and I'll keep making a documented record of this and uh, I thank you for your support.